let me show you my desk. If you're here wondering if you should start creating content for social media, whether it be YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, I'd love to hear what your starting point might be. I'd love to hear what is the first thing you want the world to know about you. It could be anything. Something as simple as, I like the color green. I am a kid at heart and I wish to always be that way. Whatever it might be, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your first message is going to be. Let me make something clear and take this the right way. Making content for social media is actually easy. It's quite simple, the making of content. Kind of like making a meal. Just like how making a meal has levels, so does making content. You can make a meal that is good enough for someone to be full. It achieves its purpose. There is no complaints at the dinner table, but there's no high praise either. Maybe you'll get the occasional complaint, but for the most part, if you serve someone something that's basic enough to fulfill the need of not hungry, you'll be fine. You may not even get complaints. If you try and be too fancy with making a meal, you are going to get high praise if you hit it out of the park, or you're going to get complaints if you try it too hard and really should have you know, stuck to the basics. Stick to the basics. That's a phrase that we hear all the time when we overcomplicate things. So content creation is really no different. And I think when someone wants to get started, if you want to get started, start. Making content comes down to recording, editing, and positioning. Recording is the easiest part. Turn your camera on and see what you get. Then when you sit down and edit your videos, you'll find that certain parts go together better than others. You'll find that with the addition of music, it makes a scene feel different. Happens in movies. Try watching a horror movie completely silent. Mute it all. No dialogue, no music. And you'll notice very quickly that it's not as scary. The auditory experience plays a big part in that. And then there's positioning. Positioning really comes down to how do I want my video to be perceived? Do I want it to be a video that is informative? Do I want people to get to know me better? Do I want my audience to do something? Is there a call to action? Um, or is it just me getting reps up? For the most part, when I was on YouTube for the f in, in my first year, it was all about reps. Uh, there was no consistency in branding. There was no real consistency in style of video. It was just record, edit, see what happens. Record, edit, see what happens. And over time, branding kind of comes together. Positioning comes together. But even then, it can change. It's fluid because the humans behind it change. Whenever I see videos about what's in my bag, uh, what gear do you use, I understand that there's a curiosity element to those videos. But on top of that, I think that there's an obsession with gear because we want to know that we have the tools to do the thing that we want to do. Can I suggest that you already have the tools at your disposal? You have a smartphone. If you don't have a fancy tripod, whether it be a click one or a hydraulic one, you have boxes, you have shoe boxes, you can place a phone against a cup on a dining table. There are so many ways for you to get started that gear is just something you do along the way. When thinking about gear, please know that I'm all for buying fancy shit. I am. However, the joy of unboxing a new phone, the joy of, you know, snapping on that new lens and capturing clearer, sharper images, the, the joy of hearing your own voice through a better mic, none of that compares to the joy of making that first piece of content and watching it back. And that joy doesn't go away. When you watch the, your first ever piece of content, you'll feel a sense of satisfaction. But very quickly, imposter syndrome kicks in and you start watching something that you admire. It could be a, a, a channel that you're subscribed to and very quickly, you'll feel this gap and it'll be a massive gap. What used to be a small gap becomes an even bigger gap because you've done the work to make that first piece of content and it's nowhere close to what you've, just, what you've compared it to. And that's okay because the, the, the way you close that gap is repetition. Now, the point I want to get to is this. 
when you sense that need for repetition and you feel the weight of the work that is necessary to get from here to there, please also know, and trust me when I say this, the joy of making content repeats as well, the same way that you experienced it after making that first piece of content. That's the only way that I explain how I've persisted with this channel for a year and a half, coming to two years, and I don't see myself ever stopping. Uh, I remember when I started, I was told that I might run out of things to say if I post too regularly. I was told that my audience will get bored of me. Uh, I was told that um, I could cause, I guess, attention fatigue because if I post too regularly, people will go, oh, I don't want to see anything else. I don't want to see any more John. And what I've had to grapple with on those claims is, first of all, if I dealt with my insecurities and I let go of my fear of judgment, I have more to say, not less. And the more I speak and the more I share and I'm willing to share at a deeper level, the more my audience has shown support and related to me. Because at the end of the day, we want to relate to real people. So that's dealt with the quantity of content. I don't ever foresee myself running out of things to say. I think you guys know that already. The next one is attention fatigue and the audience getting bored. That is something that is not within my control. And I've had to acknowledge that. And I think a lot of creators, when they start, they, they hope to, to retain attention with this vice grip because they can't afford to lose a subscriber. And they take it personally. But here's the thing. If you're making content hoping to empower change and you're making content hoping to influence others to perhaps take on your point of view or perhaps to try something that betters their life that you currently already do in your life, you're essentially saying, I give you permission to change. And part of that is people changing in your favor and people changing away from you. That's really all it is. So accepting that audience attention is not something that I control frees me up to express myself as I feel led and continue to enjoy the joy that comes from repeatedly improving the content that I make. That is something that I encourage for you as well. And you'll hear me talk about this from this point onwards in the channel. I know that it's been very much a reselling channel up until this point, but I'm also embracing the YouTuber side of me and the social media side of me. And so you're, we're going to have this conversation on this channel as well. And I encourage you to participate uh, in the comments or on our social media chat in Discord. Firstly, thank you to Live for Wealth for suggesting this um, video idea. A lot of people do it, uh, especially content creators. They'll say, what's in my bag? What's on my, what's on my desk? Um, but as a reseller, I've never thought of making this video. I like social media from a marketing point of view, and I like talking about it for that purpose. So my setup is actually very lean. I don't like too much stuff. I'm definitely not a geek for, not like a camera geek. I don't muck around with fancy lenses. Uh, I definitely don't fixate on the, the finer detail. When I watch videos comparing the finer details between, you know, an iPhone versus like a Sony, a Sony camera, um, I can appreciate it when they put them side by side. However, in terms of making content for reselling purposes, educational purposes, um, I have not noticed the need for that. If anything, the main feedback comes down to audio, which is why I'll start with these guys. These are Rode, Rode Wireless Mies. Essentially, they act as both mic and receiver. They both have mics on them. And um, these um, dust covers are removable. Essentially, they block wind noise. So while I'm driving, these have been really good to keep out the noise so that only my voice comes through. You can actually pair these up with multiple mics as well. So essentially one of them will be plugged in via USB-C and uh, either uh, like a lightning cable, USB-C to USB-C, depending on your phone. The point is this plugs into your phone via cable, becomes the receiver. And then you can have two mics for like a podcast interview and they all feed into the same mic for one recording. So these are, I think I paid $219 for them. At the time, it was the most expensive accessory I had paid for to do YouTube videos because up until that point, the, the phone mic was adequate. Um, until 
I was driving, walking, doing, you know, on the go type videos and I would get comments and messages saying, hey, you're, you're, the sound isn't quite clear. And clear sounds important because if people can't hear what you say or they find it annoying or if they've come from a good sounding video and it's gone into a bad sounding video, they disengage and go elsewhere. So if you want to keep people on your channels, on your socials, good sound. Tripods. But first, I want to talk about this one. This is a pistol grip tripod and it's fantastic because you can set up on the table like that and then you can do vlogs, um, you can do shorts, you can rotate it. It's also really good for if you are if you want to hold your phone and take photos, however it is you want to hold it. It's got a really solid grip. You might think this looks weird and the reason is because this thing can come off and go on like that. See? At which point, you can act like a gimbal. So your phone will be like this, and you can go record stuff. I've got two standing tripods here. Uh, one of them is, I believe, Xiaomi, and the other one is from Joby. This one is significantly heavier than this. This one, I think I paid $60 for. This one, I only paid $20 for, maybe $30. At the time, this one I bought first because this I only bought only more recently when I had a YouTube channel. This was more for um, back when I did <laughs> videos for LinkedIn. That was a long time ago. I might have some video of that. I'll show it to you. Very cringeworthy, but it shows how comfortable I am with you. It could be a case of, um, but you're really good at your job. Maybe it's just your boss, right? And I think really sitting down and understanding why you hate the work situation that you're in um, could very well lead to you just changing jobs. Um, it could very well lead to you uh, starting a business. So this one came with a like a little controller thing that I could press. I don't even use it. And it, it just shows you how much I don't feff around with my tech because the more of the, the more things I think about to do, the less I want to do it. <laughs> That's essentially it. Give me, give me a simple, give me one thing to do and I will enjoy it. Give me multiple things to think about and I start to not want to do it. So this one, I, I like it because the, the material is quite soft touch. There's a bit of a spongy kind of feel to the hold, to the hold. However, the thing I don't like about this is that it uses these um, air pressure hydraulic things. And if you put your phone on top, it starts to slide down after a while. So this I've had for four years, but used very sparingly, bear in, bear in mind. And even then, I have, I have, I've had time lapses where it starts here and it just goes... Mm. So very limited use. Um, I use this for... Just to kind of put around the, the garage area if I want to get one angle and not touch it. But I don't have much confidence in this and I don't recommend getting anything with these hydraulic kind of extension because it's very limited so that's the that's this one this one i like because um oh and this one whilst you can angle your whilst you can angle your phone any way you want you actually can't once it's like this because it hits so still limited in terms of or orientation this joby one i've come to appreciate because of this and that is because it doesn't have a hydraulic thing it rather is a twist and twi a twist to loosen twist to tighten so like that you pull it all out and then you just kind of twist it in and it doesn't go anywhere that's this has been my favorite one uh this is the one that has been sitting on a box here during all the listing live streams it doesn't move and i love it also in terms of ang ability to orient it like this and then if I want to go sideways, look, ta-da, see? So lots of different ways that I can angle. That's the biggest thing, the shaft. The fact that the shaft doesn't move because the moment the shaft moves, it, it becomes unstable. The moment it becomes loose, it's, it, it shakes as well with the wind. Um, this one doesn't. So with this one, I was noticing that even with some video, there would be a slight jitter to, there'll be a slight jitter to the frame. And I didn't like that, especially when, the like when it when it records the wide angle you don't notice it but the moment you zoom into certain frames you can tell there's a bit of like there's a this happening and you can see it and so steady steady tripod for the win um 
twist to lock is my recommendation. So yes, two tripods, the, the pistol grip and the twist to lock, the hydraulic one just purely for if I need that one more angle. Two iPhones. I run two iPhones because I can't justify just having cameras for camera's sake at the moment. I don't have the budget for it. That's the that's the short answer. YouTube only makes me something like sixty to hundred dollars a month at the moment, and until it actually becomes a thing worth investing in gear wise, so far the content doesn't need it. If you're thinking of starting a channel or growing your channel, you can get very far ahead without fancy gear. Um, tripods even are only necessary if you want to view record yourself doing stuff if you're just vlogging really all you need is this and a phone <laughs> that's it uh the second phone even the second phone wasn't got wasn't acquired for youtube purposes it was acquired because i had a staff member at the time and we just wanted two phones so that we can shoot i could have my phone to shoot and do youtube and ebay and then he could also then use the phone to take photos of the stock and before you say why not just get a camera for the stock because we wanted similar photos and two iPhone Pro Maxes gives us that similar result so that the, the the scrolling experience for the buyer on eBay would be consistent. As much as I would I, I would love to just be laptop only and the trackpad's fantastic on a MacBook, I have come to appreciate the need for an external mouse because it means that I can spend more time here without worrying about my hands getting getting tight. And, I, and it's not a sudden pain, it's more of a gradual slowdown of work. Almost like driving and then suddenly realizing you're driving with the handbrake kind of half on and the car is just working a little bit harder. It's not stopping, it's not hurting, it's not jarring, but you are definitely working slower than you were two hours ago. So the external mouse has definitely helped with that. Um, and finally with my space, I like... I do very much not like facing a wall. <laughs> when I face a wall, I don't feel creative. When I face a wall, I don't feel um, productive. Maybe it's because growing up Asian, lots of homework, lots of tuition, lots of practice exams, it was all wall facing. It doesn't bring out the best in me. So I like having a window with light coming in from my right side. I do like um, the kind of open feel. Even now I am facing, the wall is there, but the wall is a meter away from me because I've got stuff in front of it. So it doesn't actually feel like I'm up against the wall in a corner. Um, the window, the open window definitely helps with that um, feeling as well. I've always got books on my desk. And because there are, for me, the the brain, the brain very much dictates whether I feel like working more or not. And oftentimes if I, I'm doing, a, doing one task and I start to get bored, I start to get, my mind starts to wander, a book helps me to wander productively so that I find myself inspired. And oftentimes I get inspired very quickly because I like sharing, which means all it takes for me to read a couple of pages of any of these books here, I've got Mind Sharing, I've got The Entitlement Cure, I've got uh, Writing for Busy Readers, and I've got Soul Care. Any one of these books, all I need to do is read two or three pages and I've already got something, I've already got content. And content meaning I will have something to create on Canva. I will also have a headline for a blog post if I'm writing one. And I've also got an idea for a video. So for those of you who are wondering, wondering where all these ideas come from, I read a lot. I podcast, I listen to lots of podcasts, audiobooks, have lots of conversations with members in my community. And I'm constantly finding deeper, which means that Sure, everyone can talk about being happy, but how happy, how long happy, you know, how how you get the happy, what's the cost of the happy, it's deeper. And whenever you engage in deeper conversation, you always have something to talk about and you always have something to give. And so that's what the books are for. And I've also got toys on my desk because I'm a toy seller. I like reminding myself that this is very much a work as much as a play space and work and play coexist for me. I know some people like to keep their desk super clean, um, work only to focus. I've come to acknowledge that I'm not a focused individual when it comes to task. I'm very focused when it comes to vision. So for example, I know what kind of business I want. I know what kind of environment I want that to be. I know how I, I, know how I want it to impact my family. That I don't lose focus on. Day-to-day -day tasks though, 
I start to get really restless if I'm just in quote unquote a padded box. And so um, I do have my toys here. I do have ran like random bits of food. Um, yeah, it's lighting and not being stuck in a corner. That that keeps me more or less open field. Maybe a bit of a free range chicken, <laughs> mountain goat kind of kind of deal. Until next video, take care. Make great content. If you're looking to create a channel for the first time, link it in the comments below. I'd love to be your first subscriber and follow you on your journey. Dwell on the joy, not the dread of the work ahead. Bye.